Thank you very much, Limor and RCR Wireless, for the opportunity to present our company at the CES 2014 show. My name is Yossi Cohen. I'm the uh, president, CEO, and co-founder of MagnaCom, um, which was founded around a, a technology called WAM, or wave modulation, uh, that is an alternative to QAM modulation. The inventor of WAM is my partner, Amir Eliaz, and um, over the past year or so, we have uh, made tremendous progress, which we will demonstrate uh, uh, today to the viewers, and has been have been demonstrating at CES as well. I would like to uh, start by explaining or articulating how our, uh, our demo is structured or con constructed, and uh, we will be followed by uh, Amir Elias himself actually demonstrating the technology he invented. Our demo is, uh, is based on uh, basically a comparison between today's legacy modulation called QAM, or Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, and our proposed alternative, which is named uh, WAM, or Wave Modulation. In order to demonstrate uh, uh, the benefits of WAM compared to QAM, we have, in fact, had to implement a full uh, QAM 4096 uh, modem, which is uh, really the highest, uh, highest performance, highest QAM order uh, modem that exists out there today. In fact, I don't even believe it's, uh, it's been uh, massively deployed yet. And then uh, compare it uh, against our proposed uh, modulation, which is based on WAM. So to do that, we've used uh, off-the-shelf uh, development boards from uh, an F the FPGA leader uh, named Altera, we have uh, uh, used uh, front-end uh, boards from analog devices. All of our devices are off the shelf. Uh, we've implemented the full QAM 4096 modulator here on the left, of the left part of the diagram. And through the front-end and up converter, we're driving it into a channel emulator or a noise generator in here. The noise generator uh, uh, device in here is actually emulating a real channel. And, and in this case, I, I should emphasize again, this is uh, uh, WAM applies equally to both wired and wireless communication. And therefore, from our perspective, you know, as long as you are able to sustain a certain signal to noise ratio or channel quality, um, you will see those advantages. So uh, the modulator is, is going through the noise generator or the signal, I'm sorry, the channel emulator, going through a down converter into the demodulator and going back into uh, this box, uh, which is, uh, or an Ixia device. The Ixia device is really a traffic generator. So what we're doing is we're sending packets over the, uh, the, the modulator, taking it through the channel, receiving it through the demodulator, and then measuring the number of errors, or uh, basically the quality of the, of the modem or the connection. So the first thing we're doing is uh, we're starting with a very, uh, uh, you know, very high performance, low, I'm sorry, low signal, high signal to noise ratio, uh, high signal to noise ratio uh, channel, and then uh, taking it down to the point of a threshold or whereby QAM essentially uh, generates excessive, um, excessive amount of errors. And uh, we consider that the threshold of operation for QAM below which it's no longer a viable connection. That, uh, that same threshold is what is commonly used across the telecommunication industry and is uh, uh, 10 by minus 6 bit error rate or 10 by minus 3 packet error rate. In our case, we have 1,000 bytes per packet. So um, first we're driving it through, through there, we're demonstrating noise, then we're starting to uh, reduce the noise up until the point of threshold for QAM. Once we've done that, we've established the, uh, the worst case scenario in which QAM can operate, and we're going and converting the system to the WAM mode or changing the modulator to WAM. Um, and we're doing this through the USB connection to the Altera boards as well. Once we move it to uh, uh, or change the system uh, configuration to WAM, you will immediately see that there are no more errors. There are zero errors in the system. Um, so this, in fact, shows that uh, WAM can tolerate uh, or can, can work in, uh, at signal-to-noise ratios that are superior to QAM. But that's not all. Then we are starting to worsen the channel conditions by reducing the SNR or the signal to noise ratio by uh, one notch at a time until we're actually achieving 10 dB worse um, SNR. This is how we're demonstrating the 10 dB advantage. And we're showing that in order to get to the same threshold of errors, to, to get to the point where WAM has the same level of errors as QAM, um, we are about 10 dB apart from each other. Uh, this demonstrates the 10 dB benefit uh, that, that we have been uh, speaking about of WAM versus QAM. And again, this is in the case of a QAM 4096. I should mention uh, the last component in the, um, in the demonstration is a spectrum analyzer. And we're doing all of this without changing at all the spectral mask. So this is identical spectral mask, identical channel conditions, identical LDPC and FEC code. 
um, identical PA, identical packets, uh, nothing changes in the system. The only thing we're modifying is going from QAM to WAM. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to uh, hand it off to uh, Amir Elias, uh, the, uh, the proud inventor of the technology and uh, my friend and co-founder. Thank you, Yossi. And now we will uh, bench the WAM modulation against the legacy QAM modulation. For that, we will use this uh, uh, test setup. Uh, this platform uh, is the transmitter side. This platform is the receiver side. Uh, on top of the noise generator that Yossi described earlier, we are using a power amplifier that is tuned to be in the nonlinear area so that it introduces significantly nonlinear distortion. On top of that, we are also injecting phase noise using this uh, baseband noise generator as well as the frequency source that is used to uh, generate the carrier frequency for the test. Uh, on this screen, uh, you, you may see the IQ map of the QAM 4K modulation, which is currently configured. Below that, you, you can see the capacity chart. The yellow curve represents the uh, uh, Shannon law, and the pink star represents the current uh, configuration of the, and the performance of the QAM 4K. On, on the SNR that is now uh, tuned to the, in the SNR generator, the QAM uh, mode is uh, achieving the threshold packet error rate of uh, 10 to the minus 3. We are using a standard packet generator to uh, drive the system. Uh, at this stage now, we will tune the, uh, the system to work on the WAM mode, and we will be able to test the improvement achieved uh, in the same uh, nonlinear environment with the WAM modulation. While it, this is uh, taking place, uh, uh, you, you can see that the spectrum that is used by the WAM is similar uh, to the spectrum is used by, uh, by the QAM mode. And actually, the spectrum mask is identically uh, complying the spectrum mask of the underlying uh, standard. The system is now configured to the WAM mode. And uh, you can see on the, those uh, right side uh, uh, chart on the, on the display, our ability to learn and to track uh, nonlinear di distortion originated uh, by the channel. As you can see, the model is learned by the WAM mode, and this is our, one of our main features that uh, enable us to uh, provide uh, extreme performance under uh, nonlinear conditions. You can see also the signal uh, on the spectrum analyzer, which consumes the same uh, spectrum as was in the previous mode, in the QA mode. So uh, we are providing the same spectral efficiency and the same throughput during all the experiment between WAM and uh, WAM uh, modes. On the same uh, SNR level that uh, WAM uh, provides a threshold the performance of uh, 10 to the minus 3, which means that a package is lost in average or out of every 1,000 transmitted. The WAM uh, modulation does not uh, lost even uh, not a single uh, 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 packet. Now we will reduce the SNR until we reach the same packet error loss of 10 to the minus 3. And we will measure the benefits of the WAM modulation comparing to the QAM modulation. Still no errors. We will let the bear counter to be updated to the new uh, SNR. And it seems that we are achieving the threshold SNR of 10 to the minus 3. We will capture this SNR in the screen. 36.8. And we can see immediately that the WAM modulation in the presence of uh, nonlinearities uh, achieving and operating about 2 dBs from the Shannon uh, uh, law, which means that we are optimally were able to uh, compensate for the nonlinearities of the system. We will conclude this experiment by comparing the QAM and WAM results. 
And in this test, we, are, uh, we were able to benefit 9.6 dB system gain uh, in the presence of uh, nonlinearities, which are translated to a distance of more than four times than what can be achieved with the QAM modulation, a power reduction of, out of about 50%, uh, and a spectral efficiency of 40%. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. So the stage we're at today is that uh, we're at the demonstration uh, stage, or call it alpha stage, of the technology availability. What we are uh, going to do in the coming weeks is uh, uh, package it and prepare it for OEM's uh, direct evaluation. We plan on providing boards to our uh, early partners for uh, actually evaluating this technology, and more importantly, start integrating it into their systems and testing it in real-world scenarios. If, uh, if things go well, as we, uh, as we sure hope they will, uh, we, we would expect uh, devices based on this technology and, th and therefore followed by systems using, our, uh, using WAM technology um, in the market within, um, I would say, one to two years. So uh, in closing, I wanted to uh, reiterate the, the benefit, uh, the 10 dB benefit of WAM versus QAM and what it all means to, uh, to consumers, equipment makers, and the capabilities of today's telecommunications. We believe WAM will, uh, will ignite a revolution in the uh, evolution of uh, digital communication by, uh, by providing such a step function uh, massive improvement versus all existing technologies that have been used over the last 40 years or so. A 10 dB improvement is really unfathomable. Uh, many engineers work many years to achieve a 1 or 2 dB improvement, and a 10 dB improvement is clearly very significant. It, it really translate into, translates into mathematically to uh, uh, approximately 400% improvement in distance, about half of the uh, uh, reduction of power, or 50% power reduction, and approximately 40 or 50% reduction in spectral efficiency. Spectrum is one of our most valuable resources, so are power, uh, so is power, and therefore uh, uh, slashing those by half has a significant meaning. Uh, the ability to uh, have uh, uh, equipment communicate in, in 300 to 400% more di longer distances than what they can today has uh, a profound impact on, uh, on the telecommunications world today as well. WAM technology applies equally to all wired and wireless communications. We believe that the uh, first deployment would naturally be in areas where or markets which are not uh, fully governed by standards. So, uh, uh, examples would be point-to-point uh, uh, -point connections in wireless backhaul, um, aggregation links in DSL and cable, satellite uh, communication opportunities, and other uh, perhaps non-standard opportunities. Um, our intent is to work very closely with standard committees and over the years uh, hope that uh, WAM technology will be part of or be adopted um, in the standard committees to be included in, in things like uh, or in areas such as uh, Wi-Fi as well as uh, cellular. Um, also, in addition to uh, delivering or, or executing on this demo over the last year or so, Magnacom has spent tremendous amount of effort in partnership with, a, uh, with our IP law firm, McAndrews Heldon Malloy in Chicago, and we filed over 70 patents over this first year alone. We're very proud of, uh, of that accomplishment as well. And uh, as a testimonial to the, uh, to the level of innovation and the magnitude of uh, the impact of this innovation, um, we're proud to say that we already have received or have been granted and issued 15 US patents just in the first year of operation. We're very proud of our progress in the, uh, in the first year since the company was founded. And we look forward to uh, even more exciting years ahead. Thank you very much.